Hello, Danny Blythe, looking at lips in traditional Chinese medicine. Please pause and read this. This is for acupuncture students only. So a big part of developing Chinese medicine skills is improving observation. So lips, a few special things about them. They're unique to mammals for breastfeeding. And this links them strongly into the earth element, into nourishment. The skin is very thin compared to the rest of the face and has less pigment, so it's very easy to observe the blood on the lips. They also have no sweat glands and hair follicles, so they're less protected by oils and easy, more easily dry out. And they're very well innovated, they're very sensitive. When young children draw people, they often draw them with great big faces and lips, hands and feet, which is a pretty good representation of where our nerves are, what we feel like on the inside. And of course, as well as intimacy, lips are very important for speech and communication and for portraying emotions. So enjoy the lips are open, they're drawn up, the nasolabial fold increases, everything lifts. Mouth can open right up and in lack of joy, the corners of the mouth are drawn down. And in grief, also the cheeks as well as the mouth is drawn down. In anger, the lips can pout, they can get tense, and the lower jaw can jut out. With fear, the mouth might be um, open with the lips slightly tense, like a shock, or the lips can be drawn back and stretched. So in the classics, it says that the spleen governs the mouth. It says the spleen's opening orifice is at the mouth. And it says of the spleen, its blossoming is located at the lips and the four whites, that being the four areas around the mouth, around the lips. Zhang Jingyue, much later on, said that all states of the spleen are studied according to the morphology of the lips. Ling Xu 47 looked at favourable and less favourable positions of the organs in relation to constitution. Why some people are robust and strong and never get ill and why others are, are more prone to illness. It said um, when the lips are hard, people with hard lips, the spleen is hard. And when the lips are large and not hard or soft, then the spleen is brittle. And it also talked about um, above and below being good lips or the lips being even, the spleen is proper. And with obliquely raised lips or deviated lips, the spleen is obliquely inclined or in an unfavourable position. Channel wise we have the stomach channel passing next to the lips, the uh, large intestine channel zigzagging around the lips and the do and the ren channels crossing the lips. In the deep branches we have a branch from the stomach channel that enters the upper lip back to stomach four and then the lower lip and joins with REN24. There's a branch from the, from the large intestine channel that connects with stomach four and then enters both the upper and the lower lips and gum. A deep branch of the REN channel circles around the lips, connects with DO26 and then spreads up the cheek and up to connect with stomach one. A branch of the DO from the neck connects with the upper gum. And finally, a deep branch from the liver comes from the eye down the sides of the cheek and penetrates through the inside of the lips. So as we said earlier, because the skin is very thin on the lips, the blood can easily be observed. So red lips means heat, external or internal. Pale lips, spleen qi deficiency, yang deficiency if they're also wet or blood deficiency if they're dry. Pale blue, lips yang deficiency with cold, purple lips blood stagnation and if they're purpley red more heat, purpley blue more cold, purpley green more qi stagnation. Black lips is more severe stasis, more purple. Qing or blue green lips liver qi stagnation or pain and yellowy lips damp heat. We also said that no sweat glands and hair follicles means less protected which means they easily dry out, so it's a bit of an early warning system for the body fluids. So if they're cracked and dry, a spleen deficiency, qi or yin, blood deficiency, heat drying the body fluids, 
or blood stagnation leading to dryness. If the lips are swollen, just like with the tongue, um, usually heat or damp heat, more severe, peeled or eroded um, lips, heat, some toxic heat or empty heat, and trembling lips, spleen chi deficiency or blood deficiency with empty wind. So lip wind, redness, soreness, swelling, itching and cracking of the lips, if it's severe, blistering or exfoliation. This can be cold sores or chelitis. Um, there's usually internal heat, which can come from the stomach or from the liver and heart. There's often damp as well, which can be more full or more deficient with spleen chi deficiency and can be dietary or environmental. There's usually an external trigger that stimulates it. And this can be wind, um, it can be catching the sun, or it can be some sort of irritant. Um, blood sugar also makes you more prone to being got by one of these external triggers. Some other terms that get used in relation to the lips, donkey mouth wind, where the type of uh, lip wind where the lower lip protrudes, cracked lips, um, hair lip, which has been treated surgically for an extremely long time in China, and cocoon lip, um, which is some sort of growth and obviously a red flag. And on that subject, be very careful and refer to a doctor immediately. If you get sores that don't heal, any lumps or thickenings, painful or numb lips, bleeding from the lips, um, red or white patches on the lips and jaw tightness from swelling. The inspection following classic had 10 inspections of the mouth, looking for open, clenched, pursed, deviated, shaking, stirring, i.e. open and closing, dragging, biting, dry or damp mouth, but I think that's taken things a bit too far. Thank you for listening. Here's the uh, bibliography and further reading.